and one woman from this group will appear on the new Fox comedy, Wild Oats. So Shelly and I got married. Are you saying that you think that I wrote this? Well, I thought maybe you dropped it on your way to your car or something. Why? Well, you think I look feverish? No, I found it out front of your house. And it's got perfume on it. See, the first thought I had was of the guy. The night you got smacked in the head, you said the guy might be hurt. But what I want to know is, how did he get stationary like that to write himself an SOS? I you know this could be somebody's shopping list. I'm going to look around anyway. You want me to go with you? No, I want you to go back inside and look at the mug shots I left with you. There, I thought you were just trying to avoid my question. Hmm. What question is that? I asked why my son didn't see fit to join us tonight. Yes. Well, sadly, Al and Michael had to be away on business. Ah, on business. Business. But you did relay the invitation. Well, what do you think? They refuse to join us? I guess so. Mindy, is something wrong with the Brussels sprouts? Oh, no, not at all. They're my favorites. All right, well, all of you stop looking at me that way. There is, <laughs> there is no problem here. My brother has always gotten his fun by asking me a question. He already knows the answer to. I do know Alan Michael's already here to talk to you, and it's a tip. Well, take a genius to figure out what he's told you. You know he's not living at the house anymore. And you know he's not working for Spalding anymore. Now, do you want a real answer? Because that is, I have no idea where Alan Michael is tonight. Well, thank you for your refreshing candor. But you've only answered half the question. Fine. What's the other half? What in hell made you think you could drive my son away from everything he has a perfect right to? Forgive me for disturbing you, Miss Spaulding, but your dinner guests are becoming concerned. Are you quite well? I'm sorry to hear it, madam. Perhaps with your permission, I'll go ahead and serve the soup course while you... Let me... Uh, Alex, we're not really interested in any soup. Uh... I guess she hung up. I'm left no choice but to go up there. Mr. Thorpe, I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> really? Roger, why don't we go? Oh, we're going to go. We're going to go. But first, I'm going to get an explanation. She's going to come down here, and she's going to apologize to both of us for this rudeness, this horrible behavior. Then we're going to leave.
I thought we were going south. We are, all right? We're just hanging out here for a while, because it's nice out. Look, if, if you're bored, why don't you just go take a walk? We'll be here when you get back. Well, doesn't Michelle have to be back by 10.30? So? So it's 9.35. If she doesn't leave now, then she'll be late, won't she? Hey. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> sorry, kid. I didn't mean to scare you. What are you laughing at? Nothing. Hey, come on, relax. Relax. Huh? What, are you, what are you guys doing out here this late, huh? You're by yourselves. Oh, we're not by ourselves. Uh, my brother's just down the way. He's uh, looking for driftwood so he can build a fire. That's okay, right? Yeah, just uh, keep it to the designated areas and put the fire completely out before you leave, all right? Wait a uh, do you guys know of any hiding places around here? Hiding places? Who are you looking for? Well, you know, maybe nobody. I mean, it's just, if there was a bad guy and he came down here, what do you think he'd hide? Well, um, there's the lighthouse. Most of it burned down, but I think you could hide there. Oh, well, underneath the stairs from the house to the beach. Yeah, and, uh, there's a boat down the way that got wrecked a while back. Uh, yeah. I guess somebody could hide in there. Yeah. Well, thanks. Take care of yourselves, and uh, when your brother comes back, stay with him. You shouldn't have lied to him about Dylan, Bill. I, I, I don't care. I mean... I can't stand that guy. He, he put handcuffs on my dad. I still don't think you should just lie to me. He's a policeman. Me neither. I'm sorry, okay? I mean, I just didn't want him to make us leave. Please don't be mad at me. Look, uh, I I'm gonna talk to Ben for a second. We'll be right back. Hey, Ben, what do you, what do you say you go to Sal's and uh, order the pizza? We'll catch up to you. I need to talk to Michelle alone. Talk? Give me a break, man. I just want to get her to stop being mad at me. Look, here's some money for three slices and some sodas. So, uh, why don't you go on and, uh, yeah. we'll be there in five minutes. Right. I'll pay for my own. He was, uh, Getting hungry, so I told him to go ahead. Is that okay? He looks pretty mad. Oh, well, Moana, we can go with him. But I just wasn't hungry yet. Are, are you? I guess not. Not yet. Okay, you got 10 seconds to open the door. We're coming in. 10, 9, 8. Okay, so I lied. This is unbelievable. You mean they were up here the whole time? Where did they go? I'm going to check the other rooms up here. Maybe. Listen, just keep the door locked, all right, in case Conan the butler comes up here. Right. I'm going to find out what's going on. Okay. What is it? Chocolate pudding? Oh, well, thank you. No, I, I'm going to give up desserts for Liz, so I might as well start practicing now. <laughs> Don't let the color deceive you. It's it's chocolate. Just the kind that uh, you used to hide from me when we were children. You thought you were so smart keeping it in your shoebox in the closet. Until you opened it one day and you found it was swarming with ants. <laughs> <laughs> How you did carry on, huh? Yes. <laughs> but I always knew it was you who let the little ants into the shoebox and let them set up shop there. And look, <laughs> haven't changed a bit. <laughs> oh, but I have. Yeah. I used to take pleasure in your anguish, but not anymore. After spending years behind these walls, I've come to want a little peace and harmony, especially in my own family. Maybe you could tell me why you would like to make that impossible. 
Wait a minute. Before you attempt to lay this whole thing about Alan Michael in my mother's lab, maybe you should understand the circumstances. No, 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 really, Nick, it's all right. No. No, listen, Alan Michael screwed up big time. His father should know about it. <sighs> Look, I appreciate what you're both trying to do, but really, I can't speak for myself. Look, Alan, I would have brought this up to you before, but quite frankly, I didn't realize you would, well, be so incensed personally in Alan Michael's behalf. Why not? He's my son. I want the best for him. Just like you obviously want for Nick. And I think it's time for me to step in and protect my boy's interests. Your boy? <laughs> really, come off it, Alan. The only son you ever considered your boy was Philip. You could have cared less about Alan and Michael, whether he lived or died. I was the one who took care of him, dear. I was the one who brought him into the family, into the business, all of it. You know what he did? Six weeks ago, not less than six weeks ago, I offered him the presidency of Spalding. And he flatly turned me down. That's true. So Alan Michael's the one who deserted us, not the other way around. Maybe it wasn't desertion at all. Maybe Alan Michael realized that the title of president might better be reserved for the one who would soon be home to claim it. Oh, well, and please, in another world, you might come back to reign. Your little sojourn here has made that, well, I think, completely impossible. As much as me may wish it. I'm having a hard time following you. Maybe you should spell out what you mean, Alexandra. Alan, I'm not unaware of the adjustments it's going to be for you. I mean, you're not the kind of man that can oh, work from the background, but... Uh, oh, I'm sure Nick would be happy to take any advice you care to offer. No. And why would I go dispensing advice to someone I hardly know? Well, I thought it was obvious. <laughs> I hadn't really planned to announce this tonight, but... As you say, let's, let's, let's spell it all out, so why not? I would like to announce that on December 1st, my son, Nick Spaulding, will take the title of President of Spaulding Enterprise. May I? Congratulations. I feel I'm entitled to knowing the, the budding young president's qualifications, don't you think? Well, given your response, I don't think that it's going to make you feel any better. Oh, and why is that? Because my credentials are rather unconventional. You see, I've worked most of my life in the news business. But I enjoy very much what I'm doing over at Spalding, and it turns out I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> He's not only good, he's a natural, Alan. Why, he had to take over for Alex recently, and it turns out he does have a real feel for the business. A feel? Oh. How fortunate for the stockholders. <laughs> what Mindy is, is too delicate to say is that uh, 
Well, Nick has probably as good as instinct as you ever had. Perhaps even better. I see, I see. People used to say I could smell a change in the market like some people could smell rain coming. Is that how it is with you? Oh, Alan, don't be so patronizing. Don't make me laugh, Alexandra. I'm the one who has been treated like some old harmless reprobate. But what you don't understand is five years of standing in line for your toothpaste and your toilet paper makes your senses very keen. My memory, for example. I can remember every board meeting verbatim. I can remember who was behind me and who I had to gently shove in the right direction. I knew all there was to know about Hargraves and the rest of them. I knew their secrets, and I still do. Got a few years on me, Alan. Just give me some time. Spalding Enterprise is not some fast food franchise. We're talking about running a major corporation. I like his attitude, Alexander. I'll give you that. Mm. Maybe we can find him something in sales, but... You will not anoint him president. I forbid it. You forbid it? I'm afraid you have nothing to say about it, Alan. The board meets in November. Nick will be voted in president, and you won't be there. As a matter of fact, I think you'll have some sort of final audience with the warden then. You have a responsibility to the company, Alexander. Oh. People depend on you. You cannot toy with their lives. Don't you talk to me about responsibility. When you got yourself thrown into this place, you let everyone down and you talk to me. How dare you question my judgment? You leave me no alternative, Alexander. You're thinking with your emotions and that won't do. And just what are you referring to? I'm referring to the times when I took over the business while you were on a grand tour of Europe. However, Instead of visiting the great cathedrals, you were dropping in on the bedrooms of stray musicians. Thank you very much. That's okay with us, but we're not going to eat your damn little white chocolate pudding. Swell party, Alan, but we don't like blood in our food. Let's go. No kidding. This is you. Really more thin after two seconds. No, not yet. Not until I find out what I'm being accused of. Oh, Alan. Am I getting it? Are you making me responsible for the five years you spent here? I blame only myself for that. Oh, well, then what are you accusing me of? You're all obviously saying I committed some crime. You forgot me. Oh, there was an occasional card, a holiday visit. But you forgot me. You forgot the promise we made. What promise? Nothing that was spoken. It was just something that was there ever since we were children. We understood we would fight with each other, but... if anyone ever attacked you, I would defend you. And you would do the same for me. No one would ever come between us until I came here and you turned to Roger Thorpe. Now, wait a minute, Anna. And you not only failed to defend me, you rushed to his arms. You slept in his bed and heaven forbid. You became his wife. And some might think I was punished enough for that. I will not be the one to punish you any further. Some things earn us a special place in hell. And that may be one of them. Mr. Spaulding, it's 10 o'clock. Time for your guests to leave. The guests were ready to leave hours ago. Ginger, Donna, race you to the limo. I didn't forget. Otherwise, why would my heart be up in my throat every time I thought about you coming home? But, Alan, I'll be ready. 
I will be ready. Nobody here. Look at this. The champagne has just been poured. The ice is still frozen. They were here till a few minutes ago. There's something here that we're not seeing. I think I've seen enough, Max. Let's leave, please. I'm right behind you. What are you doing in Miss Bowling's bedroom? stupid that night. I mean, I didn't know what to say. I was the one acting stupid. I mean, I was hiding from everyone. It was like I lost my shell and, and I was scared of everything. Well, the minute I thought about you, it made me feel better. Did? Well, why? I knew you wouldn't laugh. I remember what you looked like that night. Scared out of my mind, or... No, no. You looked pretty. Really pretty. And that was the first time I ever... What? Well, it was sort of the first time I ever... wondered what it would be like to kiss you. But it, it, it wasn't like I was gonna try it or anything. I mean, you weren't thinking about stuff like that, and you probably would have thought it was totally lame. Maybe. I've changed a lot since then. Yeah, me too. Lying? Well, you really are your father's son. Well, you want me to believe that my dad and Alexandra asked you to come over and eat dinner with them? Why would they do that? I don't know, but we got an invitation in the mail. We are not making this up. Well, let me see. Let me see. I'll tell you what, kid. You better just take our word for it. We were invited to be here. No way. They hate your guts. Besides, they went somewhere else. Where? When? A few hours ago, my dad and Alexandra and Nick and Mindy. They, uh, left at 7 o'clock, so they... 7 o'clock? Really... Wait a minute, wait a minute. That is impossible. The butler was talking to the Al... The who? The butler. The big guy. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no butler here. I think it's definitely time for us to take our leave. Hey! Hey! You better not take anything, or I'll call the police!
Landing! Did you see someone? I thought I heard something. Did you? No, I, I just heard you calling right, we'll, me. We'll go back inside. closed it three years ago. Well, that's understood, Mr. Slaughter. In that case, I thank you again, Fisk. And I make you a promise. You will never lack for a friend or a job as long as you know where to find me. Give this to the men. Or something. You go upstairs and you get our fingerprints off of everything we may have touched. I don't understand this. Why would she go to all this trouble? She wants to make it look like we would steal her family jewels. Assuming that's what's in there. What is in here? What do people keep in here? Holly, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I don't believe it. Since when did this become Alexander Spaulding's most prized possession? going to be starting in a few days. Did you get your home room number yet? Are we in the same one? No. But I was thinking, you know, I, I could call the office and see if we can get it changed. and Or my dad could write a letter. What's wrong? Nothing. I thought you wanted to be in the same home room. Well, I, I do, but... Well, I, I don't know. I mean, like, if, if you start out in high school... If we start out in high school and, and everybody sees us together, I mean, you're probably going to want to, you know, to, to meet new guys. And and if they think you already have a boyfriend... So you, you want to see how it goes? Well, I mean, you could have any guy you want, Michelle. And you probably want to meet other girls, right? No, I, I mean, I already met the best one. That's how I feel. Well, I must be getting late. What time is it? Um, my watch has to be broken. Bill, it's ten thirty. My dad said we have to be home now. Didn't you hear him? Oh man, he's never gonna let you go out with me again. Uh, uh, we could say we could say somebody tried to rob us or something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for coming, all of you. Mm -hmm. 
Joshua? Well, there's a breath. What do you say that I... <clears throat> Excuse me? Pour all four of us a nice stiff drink, just like Nick is doing. Oh, I don't really think I'm up to it, Fletcher. I think I'm going to go straight up to bed. But you all go ahead. I mean, after all you've been subjected to, you deserve it. I, th I, th I think maybe I'm going to take a couple of those sleeping pills. Um, I haven't needed them in months, but maybe tonight I... I... Um, how about a, a nice glass of milk? <laughs> Be serious, Alexandra hates milk, and you're not going to take any pills, trust me. As soon as you put your head on that pill, you're going to go out like a light. Now, come on, I'll tuck you in. Well, actually, Fletch, I just think I need time alone. I need to digest everything, you know. It's quite an evening, so... you be up soon? Yes, I will. As soon as I go, collect Ben over at Bill Lewis's. Now, you take it easy. need more proof. It's staring you right in the face. She's probably got packets of your love letters in there. I, I never wrote her any but... letters. Well, then other souvenirs, your wedding memories. Let's check it out. It's probably a whole treasure trove of Roger paraphernalia. I think maybe we ought to call a doctor. Did you see how she was shaking? Yes, I did. And I didn't want her to go up there anyway, did I? Too much stress. On top of her already being sick. Well, listen, why don't we just see how she does through the night, and if she still feels this way tomorrow, we'll definitely call Ed Bauer. Well, that's all right for now, but what about in a few months? Alan's obviously planning to move in here, and the crazy thing is, she seems to be accept that. You know what? She wouldn't want it any other way. Oh, that's great. That's just great. So what, is this the way dinner's going to be every night? My mother will be ready for the funny farm, Fletch, and so will you. No, no, I, I don't think Ellen's going to be like this every night. Tonight, we had special circumstances. They hadn't seen each other in a long time, and, well, there's a lot of hurt feelings about Alan Michael on both sides. So what are you saying, that this was just a little family squabble? My good old Uncle Alan is a maniac. I'm sorry. If it was a full moon, he would have been growing fangs. He's already got them. Special hinges. They're retractable. Excuse me? Hello? Hello? Who are you? Where have you been? The kitchen. You're supposed to be at Bill Lewis's. I'm never going over that creep's house again, and you can't make me. And we were supposed to all have pizza, so Bill told me to go order it. He just wanted to get rid of me so he could be alone with Michelle. So I didn't even go to South. <laughs> Alexander must have found us the thoughts. See, I mean, what did I tell you? There's nothing else in here that's remotely connected to me. What's this? Well, I'll be damned. Well, how much more inside can I be? You're 50 feet away. Look, I know I heard something out here. It was somebody falling, a thump, something. Yeah, well, you know, it just could have been a raccoon in, in somebody's garbage. Yeah, sure. How are you doing with the mug shots? Well, I haven't noticed anybody familiar yet. All right, well, get back to work. Uh, no, look, the sooner we get this attack, or the sooner I can quit chasing raccoons. Well, right? gee, thanks, Inspector. If I see anybody I know, I'll let you know. Well, you know, if you recognize no, someone, you don't have to... You, know, you don't have to wait till it. morning. You know? I've heard it. Do you have my beeper Bye. number? says this was the room he saw Holly and Roger coming out of. This is unbelievable, even for Roger. No, it's not. It's not. It's just like him. I agree. 
But I can't imagine that Hollywood... Look, you know, maybe we should, just, we should just leave everything the way it is. I think so, too. I want the police to see this just exactly as it is. Now, Ben, darling, are you sure it was Mr. Thorpe you saw? I'm not stupid. Of course you're not, darling. Ben? I know what he looks like. He was standing right there with Miss Lindsay, and then they just left. Okay, but the, the car is still parked out back. Well, then maybe they just went downstairs. Yeah, but we were just downstairs. We checked the living room. We checked the dining room. Fine. Did anybody check the study? Uh... Well, no, I didn't. I thought that Fletch was doing that. And I thought Mindy, yeah, the, the safe, the safe. Oh, the safe. I didn't know. Know. The safe. Read this and tell me I saw what I think I saw. Contract between Alexander Spaulding and party of the second part. Jilly Grant. Right, Jilly Grant will assume ownership of one half of one half of media outlet WSPR. That belongs to you. Now you understand her. Now you understand the real Alexander Spaulding. Unbelievable. She invites us here. She humiliates us. And no, see, see, but that's the way she operates. I just allowed myself to forget how ugly she can be. Roger, let's get out of here before some... Right. <sighs> well, what's the meaning of this? This has been Guiding Light. Jewelry provided by Robert Rose.